morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the class on children's ministry. Uh, welcome to class on children's ministry. Uh, I hope uh, you're enjoying this class. Uh, please feel free to uh, share any feedback you have uh, regarding the class so we can, I can make some changes uh, and it'll be a good learning experience for uh, all of us because sometimes when we teach, we kind of, uh, you know, kind of do the same thing. But if um, some things are not working out, you have better suggestions, uh, something that I can improvise on, uh, please feel free to, um, you know, uh, share it with me and it'll just help us uh, enjoy the class together and um, have a good learning experience. Uh, can one of you please lead us in prayer even before we continue looking at the developmental needs of uh, children in uh, in uh, different age groups? Can anyone uh, lead us in prayer, please? Shall I pray, ma'am? Thank you, Stavani. Yes, please. Father God, we are so very thankful to you for once again bringing us all together in your presence, Father, for this important teaching that we are in taking, Father. Lord, we ask you to anoint ma'am and Father, anoint each of us to receive the word, receive the teaching, Father, and be equipped to touch these precious lives that you, that you uh, are giving us to Father, minister to Father. And we pray that your divine presence, your wisdom, and your uh, uh, guidance shall be with our portion, Father, throughout the class as we receive the word, that we may be able to apply it and uh, bless those who come and, Father, who want to receive the word. Uh, Lord, each of us need your guidance. Each of us need your touch, Father. Help us to, to be good stewards of your kingdom, Father, and do what you have called us to do, Father, with faithfulness, with diligence, and with honesty. In all things, empower us with the power of your Holy Spirit as we learn further and as we impart it further in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you uh, sister avidi so uh last uh, class on monday we looked at the developmental needs of children uh, uh, that were common to all age groups basically we are looking at a developmental needs uh, which will help us to counsel, mentor, work with children, uh, you know, prepare uh, relevant lessons that can cater to their uh, the needs in their specific age group, how to narrate a story, what kind of activities that we need to use, whether it's craft or, uh, you know, games or, uh, uh, you know, uh, even in terms of uh, a skit or how to relate to them, questions that we need to ask. Uh, so these developmental needs of children uh, will just help us to understand them better, teach, impart, uh, and make a lasting, uh, uh, you know, uh, impact in their lives uh, for eternity. Okay, so we looked at um, uh, the, the developmental needs common for all age groups, and then we began looking at the development needs of preschoolers, basically three and four year olds. Um, uh, we looked at a few of them. Uh, you know, few uh, needs there. Uh, last class, we'll continue with that. We'll we'll look at the intellectual or the mental needs. Uh, you know, these children, uh, the children in this age group, three, uh, three year and four year olds, they have very short attention span, uh, which means uh, you know your game. Uh, your, the song that you're teaching needs to be short so that you can move on to the next song, you can move on to the next activity. Even the uh, uh, the story that you're telling them, the narrative you're telling them from the Bible uh, needs to be very short. Uh, 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 don't give too much of details, you know, uh, narrate the whole uh, uh, incident or the story and uh, bring out the uh, 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 you know, the learning. Uh, children in this age group ask a lot of questions, so they will be kind of interrupting in between when you're teaching. Uh, uh, it can kind of get uh, a little frustrating uh, because they have, they suddenly think about some way question, you know, about something which uh, has happened in the week or, you know, something that their friend is doing, something that they have seen and they'll ask you. So you need to just be patient because, uh, and need to know how to, 
channelize their attention back to what you are trying to get them to listen and teach. Um, they are la learning language very quickly and uh, rapidly, uh, but they're more familiar with their own uh, mother uh, tongue. Uh, so, you know, if you're speaking to them in that dialect, is, they'll feel comfortable. But if you're speaking to them in, in English, we need to keep the language very, 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 very simple. Uh, sometimes, you know, when we teach children, we uh, in any age group, we tend to speak to them uh, like we are speaking to our own peers, to our own uh, the people in our own uh, uh, age. Uh, but we need to understand that they are children. We need to get down to their level of uh, of understanding and how to use the right kind of uh, language. Also, be very careful using Christian jargons. You know, if you say, uh, you know, we've been made righteous, the blood of Jesus cleanses us, they will always think that blood is something that is very terrifying. How can it clean? Water only cleans, uh, washes us because, you know, that's how, that's why they they uh, they used to wash their face or their hands. Um, uh, so how can the blood of Jesus cleanse us? You know, they, they won't understand atonement, righteousness, uh, they're justified by faith and all of those things. So please don't use Christian jargons. Uh, you know, keep the language very, very simple. That is why it's so important. We'll come to how we need to write a lesson plan. So important that we need to write down what we are telling uh, children. Sometimes we think, oh, it's just a child. Why do I need to make notes? Why do I have to have a, like, you know, a, a sermon written down if I'm teaching, preaching adults, you know, I, I might have to write down the whole entire sermon. Uh, but the children, I can just run it through my mind. But so important because when you use certain language that they don't understand, they, you know, or you speak to them in a language which they don't relate to, you will see them totally disconnected and then they'll be playing, they'll be running around and you cannot catch their attention because anyway, their attention span is very, very less. So very important to even write down what you're trying to teach them, uh, uh, you know, so that there is the language is very, very simple. And wherever you're using big words, like if you're teaching them about, uh, you know, uh, uh, Zacchaeus, you know, saying Zacchaeus was the worst sinner they won't understand what is worst, uh, uh, who is a sinner, uh, you know, he was a tax collector, they won't understand tax collect, uh, who a tax collector is. So how are you going to simplify all of these terms? And for example, you know, um, uh, if you're saying, you know, the prodigal son, they won't understand what is prodigal. Uh, you know, the lost son, uh, you know, how can the son be lost when he is with his father? You know, so uh, all of these questions can pop up in their minds. They won't relate to what you say. You know, you can say the, 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 the prodigal son or the lost son went and, you know, wasted all of his father's living in uh, father's money in wild living. We understand what is wild, you know. So that's why it's so important for us to uh, write down so that uh, our language is simple, so that we can communicate uh, very easily to them, and uh, they are able to understand and relate to us and learn as well. They uh, have um, a fear of the unfamiliar, so you know. Um, uh, it's important that you have the same classroom, the same place where you meet uh, regularly because uh, now they're learning to step out of home for shorter periods of time, being uh, away from their parents, away from home. So if you're taking them to a new place and they're not familiar, it can kind of scare them. They can start crying, then they'll want their parents. And then, you know, uh, that will be something very difficult for you to handle because you'll have to go and look for their parents and all of that is unnecessary, uncalled for. So keep a very familiar place, an environment which they're used to, they know where they're meeting, uh, they kind of feel secure in that place, uh, you know, they will uh, they will just uh, enjoy themselves. It's also important that, uh, you know, it's also very important to make them feel that they are important by asking them to help. They love to help. Uh, so get them to do little things, you know, okay, uh, why don't you take this uh, crayons and give uh, this three to uh, this child, give this, like another, another child, you can say, give this three to another, this child, take this paper, give it to her, give it to him, small uh, jobs. You can't say, take this crayon and, you know, give three to each of them, they will find it difficult. If you give three in their hands, they go and give it to this child, they find it more uh, easier. So they love to help. Uh, uh, so make them feel important by asking them to help. They learn through their senses. They learn through, what are the five senses? Anyone knows? 
uh, we learn from not only children but all of us learn through five senses what are the five senses i can i give the first two yes go ahead um you have uh, hearing the sense of hearing the sense of smelling uh, maybe i can add the third one the sense of uh, feeling that is touching and then seeing and the tasting yes thank you charles um so these are the five um, uh you know um senses to which they learn so you know most of the time we just uh, use the one sense that is uh, uh, uh that is hearing you know we're just narrating the story but it's important that they see so use pictures use powerpoints uh, you can use small movie clips that they can see uh, so seeing and uh, hearing is done with then also through um, you know uh, uh, through uh, touch uh, you know just sensing things so you can give them you know uh, if you're talking about the the the, the, the sower when to sow uh, you know some seeds you can give them seeds in their hand you can give soil uh, you know you can have thorns so they can just feel so some children feel uh, learn through feel the touch of feeling uh, taste you know um, uh, the uh, you know the you're talking about the prodigal son you know he uh, uh, he loved to enjoy good food uh, and all that so you can just give them a little little pieces of cake or you know anything or a or a chocolate or a, a fruit that you have that you've cut into small pieces uh, it just makes it ex exciting or you're talking about the fruit of the spirit or you know um, when you're talking about uh, the, the very uh, fam familiar story of uh, five loaves and two fishes how jesus and son you can have bread you can get them to touch the bread you can get them to taste the bread uh, uh, children learn through all of these senses so when you use We'll, we'll study more of this when we are uh, learning how to prepare the lesson plan. You know, when you're using all of this, it just becomes very um, uh, exciting uh, for them and they learn through their senses. They're very, very uh, curious. Um, you know, what looks very ordinary for us is full of wonder for a young child. Uh, so you can talk about, uh, you know, uh, the, the beautiful world that God created. You can talk about the planets and the stars and you know, they'll be just so fascinating fascinated uh, with the the whole of creation um you know, and uh, they they can explore God's uh, fascinating world to their heart's content uh, because they have active imaginations. They imagine things. Uh, we we looked at it. They can fantasize. They you know uh, imagine things. Uh, so you know, paint things or the way you narrate the story uh, should be in such a way that you're just painting their imagination, getting them to think, you know, uh, uh, through voice modulation to your eyes, to your body language, to your hands, you know. Uh, so when you're doing that, they have active imaginations. They are just able to think. They're, they're, they're just, you know, listening intently to you, what you're saying. Uh, so for this age group you basically have to you just can't sit and say you know uh, uh jesus went to the city and there was a blind man who was sitting there you know he was blind uh, uh and you know he wanted jesus to heal him but you know if you if you just use more of excitement you know and the blind man was so excited that jesus is coming because this is the only chance that this blind man can see you know and you're using all that you're closing your eyes and you're doing all of this drama they they are quite excited about the whole thing because they have uh, you know active imaginations they think very concretely uh, in clear definite ways uh, in ways that they can uh, can be seen or felt uh, so for example you know um, uh, um, uh, uh, when you say that the sun comes up in the morning they think that okay the sun comes up in the morning uh, that's when we wake up or you know uh, when you wake up is when the sun comes up in the morning now if uh, you know a, a, a child in this age group uh, asked a pregnant lady uh, you know oh, what is in your stomach uh, so the pregnant lady replied to this three or four year old and said, you know, uh, there's a baby here in my stomach. So, you know, this child said, oh, there's a baby. Then they said, did you eat a baby? 
so you know uh, they basically think that what you eat goes into your stomach and it it, it stays there so this child asked this pregnant lady did you eat a baby because if a baby has to be in your stomach you obviously had to eat a, you had to eat one so they basically think uh, you know very concretely in the way that can be seen or felt uh, so they think based on their natural surroundings to their senses like touch seeing smell taste and hearing uh, so you know um, uh, so you need to be very careful in how you narrate things to them and how you uh, tell them uh, things because they're uh, you know they think very concretely uh, they think in clear definite uh, ways they also have very intense emotions uh, sometimes they can be excited, happy, another time they can be very uh, moody or crying or, uh, you know, uh, bored. Uh, so just uh, fluctuations, but very intense uh, emotions. So if you look at some intense emotions of them suddenly crying and all, you know, uh, don't be taken aback. It's because in that age group, they basically show very intense uh, emotions. Uh, the next one is socially. Um, Socially, they are very self-centered. So if you give them uh, crayons, they like to keep everything for themselves. Or if you uh, give them a ball, they like to hold it for themselves or play or a toy. Uh, or if you give them color pencils, they like to keep everything near them. They don't like to share it with others. So it's important for us to keep it in the center so that, you know, uh, we learn to tell them to take exactly one what they need to color so that others can use the other colors. Uh, just teach them. Don't think that child is... Uh, it's a bad child. It's just basically all of them are very self-centered. Uh, they're learning to take turns. So, you know, they can all speak up at the same time. They'll all want to do things at the same time. So you need to teach them how to take turns. Uh, you know, they like to try new things. So teach them new things, craft, uh, you know, painting, have finger painting, cutting, uh, small things. You know, uh, also teach them songs, action songs that they learn. Uh, you know, memory verse in a very creative way, you can teach them as well. Uh, they also enjoy playing side by side. Uh, so sometimes, you know, when you're teaching them a story, suddenly you'll find two children playing by themselves. Uh, you know, uh, they don't like group games. Like I mentioned uh, last class, they like to just play with two or three children. So group games don't really uh, go with this uh, uh, these uh, children in this age group if you're having a group game it should be very just short quick and uh, fast because they just like to play uh, with two or three children a uh, max okay uh, and also as i said they have intense emotions they laugh at one minute they cry the next uh, so it's not that they are pretending or they're being over emotional it's just who they are spiritually um, uh, these children Oh, sorry, this is socially. Okay, spiritually, you know, they can understand that Jesus loves them. Uh, this is an age where they uh, they need a lot of love, care, uh, informative years. So you can, um, you know, show a lot of love to them. Also teach them a lot about God's love. They're filled with wonder about uh, everything, how Jesus healed the blind man, how Jesus raised the Jairus' daughter, how Jesus multiplied the five loaves and two fishes. Um, so, you know, they're filled just with wonder about everything. So, uh, you know, you can talk about creation. Uh, most of the lessons that, uh, sorry, are planned for children in this age group are on creation and all about Jesus' miracles. Uh, they love Bible stories be read to them, but please don't read uh, the Bible stories. Uh, it's good to narrate, but at the same time, it's good to have the Bible open so they know that you are teaching them from the Bible. You know, they easily accept everything that is told to them. Uh, so be careful how you present the truths of God's word. Uh, they begin to see the difference between right and wrong. So it's important at a young age to teach them about what sin is, what right is, what, what is the wrong thing. Uh, so, you know, it's a good age to begin teaching them. Uh, don't think, think that they're too small, that we can't talk about sin, uh, that, you know, we shouldn't be talking about what is wrong and right. It's not an age, but it's important at this age that they understand they can differentiate. So good to teach them uh, how to be caring, sharing, not to be selfish, uh, 
not to be not to fight not to hit others and all of those things also they experience worship so lead them into meaningful time of worship uh, you know sometimes we can just tell get them to sing a song or two but lead them into a meaningful time of worship because uh, they can you know they uh, they can experience worship um, as well okay yeah yes christopher uh, yes, uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, how do we explain to them the uh, from a spiritual uh, point of view, uh, you know, the supernatural aspect of 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 having someone like Jesus, uh, you know, love them, and they don't, they're not able to actually see him, uh, uh, you know. So it's it's more of you know, you know, I guess the early stages of believing in faith, and uh, you know, that there is there is a that there is a supernatural being. Who is uh, who's there? You know, for for them, uh, how do we talk to that? And uh, you know, so I just wanted to understand that. Uh, yeah, good question. Like I said, you know, they are uh, the age group where they accept anything, uh, whatever you tell them. So you tell them, uh, you know, uh, there is God, uh, but we can't see Him. Uh, but you know he's there with us uh, he he loves us he cares for us uh, just like you are here uh, sitting with uh, me in class you can't see your mommy and daddy but uh, you know you you know that your mommy daddy loves you they care for you they they're not going to just leave you here alone but they're going to come and take you they have not forgotten about you because they love you they care for you so in those terms you can explain because you know um, uh, uh, they are uh, able to uh, just basically accept everything you tell them. Even if you say that there is a God, they will believe there is a God. If you say that you know we can't see God, they will they will learn that yes, we can't see God. And you tell them that God loves them and cares for them, even if you can't see them, they will just take you at face value. So they are they are not in an age where they are looking for a logical reasoning like when they reach grade uh, uh, six, seven. When you know that age, they they're learning proofs and theorems and proving A is equal to B, B is equal to C, so A is equal to C. They're not in that phase of life, but here they're in the phase where they'll just believe anything you tell them. You tell them why is the grass green? They're because God made it green. They'll just uh, believe that God made it green. Why is the sky blue? Because God made it blue. Blue. They'll just believe you uh, for that. So you know. Um, so uh, some of these. Um, uh, truths um, uh, which are kind of abstract which we are not able to prove and logically think through you know if you just tell them they just believe it that uh, uh, believe what you say yes Is that, does that help Christopher okay uh, yeah, yes yeah Charles I wanted to to share especially uh, when we are teaching the boys and girls about Christ, I, we we do what they call little kids uh, can know God. So you you teach them using uh, the senses, especially the sense of touch and the sense of sight. So you you bring a stone, you bring a, a leaf, you bring things that God made, and then. You, you, you show them to them and then you tell them these things are here, not by accident, but there is someone who made them. And then you tell them God made them. Later, maybe when they have clocked maybe seven years or somewhere there, that's when they will start asking some questions. But why didn't God make a car? Then you would now explain God made man, gave him knowledge, to make a car, so in that way. So th these children, though they ask why and, and how questions at that age, but their why and why questions are literally there. They are not so deep. So the moment you teach them about God, they will pick it. Totally and wholly, they will pick it. I thank you. Thank you, Charles. Yes. So what you're saying basically is using object lessons. We'll uh, do that when we are learning how to write a lesson plan or write a curriculum. Okay. 
uh, thank you. So we'll move out to the physical aspects of the faculties of um, children of, in age three or four. So physically, they are very active. They love to run and uh, jump. Uh, so you have, can have games, activities uh, based on this. They're developing their uh, large muscles, that is their um, hands, their uh, legs, you know. Um, it's good to use the floor and not the table. Um, uh, because you know uh, they basically we feel more comfortable uh, with on the floor and not the table uh, they're also you know growing um, uh, rapidly uh, yeah use the floor not the table uh, basically get down to their uh, to their level you know provide for them a uh, king's uh, kid size chairs tables uh, uh, so that you know it, they feel more uh, comfortable and it's it's nice if the teacher gets to their level or even sits down you know sits down with them gets to their level uh, it just basically uh, helps them um, you know so that you can look at them they can look at your face you can have eye contact with them you can catch their attention uh, and it it will just uh, enhance the whole learning experience uh, for them they're also growing uh, rapidly uh, they also have uh, a boundless energy, so you need to know how you can, um, you know, use, channelize that energy in the right means to achieve the right things uh, so that you're getting that concentration at the same time learning is ex happening and that energy is not uh, getting drained off them in, in a negative way where the learning is not um, happening. They also, you know, they have, even though they have a lot of energy, they get very tired very easily. So you need to balance the activities that you're having so that, you know, you can channelize the energy that they have, the boundless energy energy that they have at the same time they don't get uh, tired very easily and they're not uh, interested in doing what you are asking them to do uh, they're also developing their fine motor skills which means their hands so they 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 can't do cutting like I said or you know uh, they can't uh, paint with the paintbrush they can use fingers for painting uh, they can't draw perfectly so all of those things have to be done by the teacher beforehand or this uh, children's church minister uh, just the basic things that they can do is you know coloring within the boundary you can help them uh, you know just basic uh, things that for craft work that they can do you can but uh, needs a lot of assistance because they are developing their fine motor uh, skills so to teach um, uh, preschoolers effectively um, help children feel comfortable when parents leave uh, so that, that's important so that you create a bond uh, with them and there are no, uh, you know, you don't have every week, you don't have uh, a new teacher. Uh, if there are two or three of them, you know, they're consistent throughout that year so that the child feels a bonding to the uh, teacher. They know who their teacher is. If you have a, a different teacher every week, it's not going to go well with these children because they're learning to get out of home, step out of home, out of the comfort zone of their parents and uh, you know, stay away with their from their parents for about two hours uh, so that for them to feel comfortable you know uh, make sure that it's the same teachers and also make sure that it is the same uh, place where you're meeting and it's consistent these two things are consistent also involve all the five sense uh, senses in the learning activities in the class activities in your teaching uh, provide uh, time for um, worship um, Use simple songs about Jesus. I already talked about this in the last class. Uh, use clear and simple words. Just reiterating what I said. Always teach with your Bible open. Uh, tell stories, the Bible stories, with great enthusiasm and expression, voice modulation, eyes expression, hand movement, uh, you know, your body movement uh, and all that so that they are into it. They just imagine. They're excited. Um, uh, you know, get all the children to give a chance to all children to uh, help you. Okay, uh, I also mentioned that uh, uh, include act active times for larger muscle movement uh, means, you know, to use their hands and legs, uh, encourage them to do things for themselves. Don't always be helping them. Uh, Teach them how they can do things on their own um, and, you know, ask questions that begin with, I wonder, because, you know, I told you that they like to fantasize a lot, imagine a lot. So, you know, you can just say, uh, you know, you're talking about uh, 
creation. You can say, I wonder how the world would have been before everything, everything that we see around, you know, the plants, the grass, the blue sky, the birds, the, uh, the, uh, the ocean, the seas, the, the river, you know, these flowers, these stones. I wonder how the world would be, you know, um, or I wonder how the world, uh, you know, what, God would have said when he looked at uh, uh, when he created the sun and the moon and the stars what do you think I wonder what he would have said or what was his expression you know so they would they would just think and imagine so you know just good to get them to wonder think along imagine um, also uh, let me put on the next slide you know, move uh, them to transitions by giving them clues about what is going to happen next. You know, connect uh, one part of the story to the to other. Give them a smooth transition. Give them clues of what is going to happen next, uh, so that they're able to understand. Um, also, emphasize how much God loves them because it's a very important phase where uh, you know love is so much an integral part of their uh, uh, the very nature. So they they. Um, or uh, you know they they uh, they want to feel loved and accepted, uh, so teach them about God's love and also encourage um, uh, sharing. Very very important. Uh, encourage them how to share with others. Uh, pastor, how much information can a three to four year collect in their mind? What's their limit and boundary in all? Cause little ones get cranky or restless. Yes. Um, I said, you know, maximum uh, uh, seven to eight minutes for a story uh, can help if you have all the uh, PowerPoints and the pictures and all, uh, uh, 10 minutes can help. So, you know, even when you're teaching them a song, 10 minutes, activity, 10 minutes, everything can just be minimal to 10 minutes. Yes, it can help. It can help. Anything, uh, any other questions? Uh, just a few more things that I would like to uh, mention here for the three and four year old is, uh, you know, um, uh, let them feel in control of their own surrounding, their environment, you know, uh, get them to, you know, uh, they usually uh, like to take things apart if they're uh, playing with puzzles or blocks or, uh, you know, uh, Legos, they like to put everything away, they like to put the things apart, the whole place will be messy, don't think, uh, you know, these children are really, uh, you know, uh, uh, creating a mess, but that is how they like to work, that's part of their discovery uh, uh, process and how they, uh, you know, dismantle everything and put everything uh, back together, that's how they also feel control over their environment. Um, you know, uh, as I said, also that they're very curious and observant. Uh, you know, what is ordinary for us is like full of wonder uh, for a young child. I remember when my niece was uh, was three or four year old, I narrated to her the blind man Bartimaeus story, and I did it with such expressions and with such drama that she really loved that story. So, you know, in a day, she asked me to narrate that same story about four to five times, even before going to bed. She called me and said, can you tell me that blind man story? You know, and I was like, you know, uh, I mean, what's so much about that blind man story? But, you know, uh, it's just that they are so fascinated about this whole thing about, uh, you know, the way the blind man shouted and screamed and ran to Jesus. It, I think it just thoroughly fascinated her. She listened to that story more than four or five times in that day. Tired me out, but uh, she didn't get tired listening to it. So that is how... Uh, they are so even if they ask you to keep repeating stories you can just do it because they're so fascinated uh, by what God uh, does and creation and all of that um, you know um, these little ones you know they don't um, uh, express emotions uh, uh, you know they experience emotions sorry uh, uh, that they don't understand uh, so you know suddenly if they're crying they're not able to uh, basically articulate in words what they are feeling so you need to uh, tell them you know why are you crying uh, 
uh, you know, then uh, they say, you know, I lost my, uh, I can't find my water bottle. So you say, oh, you're feeling uh, frustrated or you can't find your shoes or you're, uh, you know, you're, you're worried how you're going to walk home or how you're going to go without your shoes. So you need to get them to explain, uh, you know, and understand uh, their emotions. So even, you know, at times when they are uh, sad or angry, they can be angry, but you need to get them to, uh, you know, uh, express their emotions, tell, uh, articulate in words why they are angry, what is upsetting them, uh, why are they so happy, why are they so um, uh, sad, okay? And um, lastly about this age group is like, you know, these little ones need to use their imaginations. Um, they have trouble sorting out what is real and what isn't. Uh, so, you know, um, you need to explain to them what is real, uh, what is not, um, you know, for example, if um, uh, I remember a couple of years back, there was a TV serial uh, that came uh, uh, in India and kids were very fascinated uh, by this person. And they, they showed kids, you know, if the, if the kid jumped off a, a wall or something there was this uh, this the superman kind of a person who'd come and save them and we had tr kids uh, literally trying that so one one child jumped off the the balcony thinking uh, you know uh, this person will come and save them and then they had to stop this whole uh, this uh, uh, this tv serial uh, you know uh, with children were viewing because it was becoming very harmful for them they were taking it literally very real so you know uh, they have trouble sorting out what is real and what is what isn't so um, we need to help them out uh, to see things very um, clearly um, so they also love to pretend you know, um, they, uh, you know, they, uh, by school age, they begin to realize that there is logical explanation for everything. But now they, you know, there is a lot of pretense that happens. So we need to teach them um, uh, all of these things. Asha's question is, will puppets help them in narrating a story or will they be afraid of it? No, I think they'll enjoy, uh, they'll enjoy puppets. Yes. Uh, and enjoy puppets and be fascinated, you know, because they like fascinated with everything. So this is like a fascination for them. It's quite exciting for them. So they would be fascinated. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions on this age group? No questions? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, if there are no questions, then um, we'll move on to um, the developmental needs of children uh, ages 5 to 7. Okay, we'll look at uh, what are the developmental needs of children uh, in ages 5, 6, and um, 7. Uh, children in this age group basically, uh, you know, are learning how to uh, relate uh, to God, to, to family members, and to other people in the world. Uh, they're learning more and more about the world outside, what it is like, because now, you know, they're not just like two or three hours uh, in a play school, but they kind of begin full day school. They're full day away from home um, uh, for about five to six hours. So, you know, they, they're learning more about the world, uh, what is like uh, outside home. Um, they're also learning to separate from family for uh, or their parents for extended periods of time in a day before it was just uh, uh, two hours but now it's like more than five six hours they're also learning um, new skills to take care of themselves when they're away from their uh, their family uh, they basically uh, building confidence in their new abilities you know, on how they can stay away, how they can manage themselves, how they can eat on their own, uh, tie their own shoes, shoe uh, put on their own shoes, tie their shoelaces, uh, you know, how uh, they can manage themselves um, in class, writing, listening to the teacher. So they're just building confidence in their new abilities. Uh, also, how the new abilities of making friends, connecting with uh, so many other classmates. Um, uh, before in play school, it's like, you no know, maximum around 10 15 children now you have around 25 kids or 30 kids in the class 
so you know making friends outside the family circle outside people uh, who are familiar to them familiar faces they're learning all of these things they're also learning to read but uh, But, uh, uh, but not usually, uh, they're not usually fluent uh, readers. So you can't give them the Bible and ask them to read uh, uh, a Bible narrative, uh, you know, but you can get them to read a short memory verse that you can write on a, uh, on the board or, you know, on the chart or uh, anything like that, uh, you know. Um, so for the purpose of uh, curriculum, you know, this age group is referred to as pre-readers. So you can't have anything that will, you know, they you can't give them a workbook uh, or anything that they have to read and write or you have questions and answer it because they're, uh, they're just learning to write their names well. You know, they, they don't even know how to write their names. They're learning to write all of the alphabets, the letters. Um, they're learning to read and They're learning to read and write and copy individual words and short sentences or phrases. So best to this age group, you know, don't give them a, a, a student workbook. Don't give them a, a worksheet where they have to write things, uh, write question and answers or uh, do puzzles, you know, um, or even get them to, uh, uh, you know, you can just basically get them to write short memory verses if you want them to write. They're also learning uh, spellings. Uh, so their spellings, they will find it very difficult. Uh, so you need to get them to spell it out. Uh, so basically, you know, keep the sentences very short that they need to um, uh, uh, write. Uh, perfecting their larger motor skills. Uh, you know, uh, they're learning to use their legs and upper arms. So running, jumping, climbing, standing on one foot, balancing. Uh, they're also learning rhythmic movements, uh, dancing, hopping, marching. So you can uh, teach them to, you know, choreography a little bit, uh, you know, uh, during worship time. Uh, they are also learning complex skills such as uh, kicking a ball, sometimes throwing the, a football or a throw ball to somebody else, you know, uh, batting, uh, running a race with others, uh, jumping on the rope and all of those things are something that they're learning, developing their skills. So you can have some basic games along these uh, uh, these lines. You know, they're also perfecting their fine motor skills, how to use their hands and fingers. So they're clapping their hands, snapping their fingers, picking up things, uh, working with small objects. So you can teach them a little more complex um, uh, you know, action songs compared to the three and four year old. Uh, they like uh, coloring, but uh, you know, um, you can have a little more complex drawing for them, but uh, the, they will have very simple uh, uh, a simple or complex drawing but you know uh, which they can color with crayons or color pencils or uh, markers um, they learn to draw stick figures of you know people animals places and um, things sorry yeah I'm just moving so fast and I'm not able to Okay, um, you know, they also finger painting, um, they uh, go on with their using their fingers for painting, but uh, slowly they can start using the brush, but they're not very uh, good at it. Um, you know, uh, they also can create objects with, cl uh, with clay, so you can give them uh, clay. Uh, songs with more complex uh, uh, actions, hand movements, finger motions, uh, which you can do. Uh, writing letters, numbers, uh, names, words, uh, or you know, short phrases and short sentences, uh, they can uh, do that. Um, uh, children in this age group, you know, enjoy this kind of play. They like to imagine things and pretend play. Uh, so they, you know, you'll find them. Uh, acting like their teacher, playing teacher-teacher, or, you know, like uh, uh, 
like uh, you know a driver driving the school bus or uh, like uh, parents or whatever you know so they like to do a lot of pretend play um they they're learning to play now uh, uh, in 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 larger groups of children for a longer period of time uh, so group games can work uh, uh, pretty well in this age group compared to the 3 and 4 years uh, f 3 and 4 year old um Uh, discovering more about sound, textures, color, smell, taste. Um, uh, so, you know, they'll be quite fascinated, excited. They want to explore. They want to implement things. Uh, so you can use a lot of uh, uh, different sound variations when you're narrating. Uh, use different colors, smell, taste uh, for their learning experience. They work with paint, uh, colors, markers, glue, scissors, strings, um, yarn. Uh, and, uh, you know, they can use all of this for, um, uh, you can use all of this for that activity, which uh, excites them, uh, which would help them also reiterate the learning, what uh, you are teaching them. Uh, they also play simple instruments like uh, drums, cymbals, and bells, but, you know, they are not, uh, uh, they don't play in perfection uh, to music uh, in rhythm in time they can be very noisy and very very loud but they love to beat on the drums they love to you know clang the cymbals and all of that uh, but that will be noise so better avoid it uh, but you if you see children running to the drums and trying to play with it it's because this age group just uh, loves to do that um, you know they like to um, uh, sing familiar songs so you, know, you teach them uh, don't teach them new songs uh, keep singing new songs for the entire worship time each Sunday but sing some familiar songs also teach them one uh, uh, new song and then you know kind of sing that over the week so that they get more familiar with it because they like to sing familiar songs they like dancing marching uh, they like moving to music so you can see them uh, dancing more excited to, to worship God um, uh, you know simple games uh, that will require some new skills uh, which if you're using uh, games which require new skills, you know, then you have to keep the games very, very simple. Uh, they like acting out stories and retelling stories. So, uh, you know, you can get them to, uh, re uh, to tell them what you have narrated to them so you can understand how much they have uh, learned, how much, uh, uh, you know, they have uh, comes back to their memory and important things with the miss out, you can uh, reiterate that um, that learning. Okay. Okay. So, um, the what are the spiritual messages that children in this age group need to learn? They need to know that God uh, loves them, that God loves uh, not just them, but everyone, their family, their friends, their neighbors, the children in school, their teachers. Uh, they also um, uh, need to know that God made everything perfect. Um, uh, you know, they also need to know that God knows each one of them, even that there are so many of them in this world uh, because they're learning to explore the world apart from their family. Now it's becoming so many people, a huge son. But in spite of them, uh, in spite of there being so many people in this world, they need to know that God knows them, God loves them, they're precious to God, uh, that they're made unique and special. Uh, you know, so talking about creation, how God created Adam and Eve, how he's created each one of us unique different talented that they are valuable to god um, and to others uh, encourage them to pray because um, they will learn that you know god hears their uh, prayer uh, and why does god hear their prayer uh, because god will answer and you know when god answers we can trust him uh, uh, the prayers that we ask him, what he does in our life, he's, he's always good. Uh, he's someone that we can depend on, you know. Um, also teach them what's the difference between right and wrong, good age to continue teaching them about right and wrong, continue from, uh, from when they were three or four years old. Um, you know, teach them how God is involved with us throughout history, you know, from creation, Adam and Eve, you can take them through uh, history, how he's right up till now, he's, you know, he's involved in our lives, he cares for us, he loves us. Um, also talking about how God has uh, uh, a plan and future for them, 
uh, talking that Jesus is God's son, he, Jesus loves us. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, we can choose to do things that are wrong, we can uh, choose to uh, sin, do things that are bad, but, uh, you know, um, we need to um, reassure them that, you know, um, even though we make mistakes, um, uh, all of the mistakes, um, uh, you know, are some uh, are called sin, and how sin takes us away from God, uh, how it uh, it uh, it breaks the heart of God, it makes God sad. You know, just talk about how you know they get punished when uh, they do something wrong in school, how their parents punish them when they uh, do something wrong, but how Jesus, you know, took the punishment upon Himself. He paid for our sins. Uh, how He died for us, what Jesus uh, did for us. Uh, you know, and uh, how we can uh, live for him forever and how we can accept Jesus as our uh, personal uh, savior. So these are some things, of course, you know, when we are talking about these things, we can say, hey, they're only, uh, you know, um, in this age group of five to seven, they're very young. So how can we talk about sin, salvation, uh, Jesus dying? Uh, it all has to, again, uh, be something that is very, very uh, simple, uh, uh, something that is age related, specific to their age, um, you know, uh, and how we are going to explain it to them uh, is also very, very um, important. Okay, uh, we'll stop here. We we'll look at how, uh, uh, you know, how we can uh, communicate, uh, uh, how they hear and understand Bible stories in the next class. Anyone has any questions? I hope I was not too fast. No, just going through th things because it's quite uh, easily understandable and um, easy to perceive and understand. Uh, I hope it's not too fast. Anyone has any questions? Thank you, Kung. Okay, there are no questions, then uh, we'll end class. I've posted the notes on the development needs of children on the stream page. You can uh, access it. Uh, uh, yeah, so we'll end class here. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed uh, day and a week ahead. I'll, I'll see you all on uh, Monday. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Asha.